Welcome everyone to a Subnautica tip video. Some people have asked me questions regarding upgrade modules in the game, so I thought it would be a good time to give a full look at the various upgrade modules overall. So today we're going to do a full look at the Seamoth, which is typically the first vehicle you can access in game unless you skip around a bit. There will be spoilers in this, so if you wish to avoid those, then feel free to check out some of my other Subnautica content instead. So for starters, the Seamoth is a submersible vehicle you can use in the game which requires a power cell in order to function. By default, it can handle depths of up to 200 meters. It also has a hull integrity aspect like your bases, which you can think of as a health bar. The Seamoth's health bar will decrease when damaged by hostile creatures, running into things, when exposed to high temperatures above 70 degrees Celsius, or when you go beyond the maximum depth it can handle. It can also take damage from the acidic brine that covers the seafloor of the Lost River. You can use the repair tool to fix the damage to the Seamoth, and if not repaired and the health reaches zero, the Seamoth will explode, hopefully without you inside. In order to build the Seamoth, you will first need a mobile vehicle bay. This means you will need to find the blueprint scans for both the Seamoth and the mobile vehicle bay. So now for the main part of the video, the upgrade modules. First, let's take a look at the depth upgrades. As I said earlier, the default depth for the Seamoth is 200 meters. As you progress through the game, you will be able to unlock three levels of Seamoth depth modules. Mark 1 will increase your max depth to 300 meters. Mark 2 will increase your max depth to 500 meters and Mark 3 will increase your max depth to 900 meters, making it the most effective overall. The depth modules do not stack, so you cannot use two Mark 1 versions to increase your depth beyond 300 meters. That means the deepest you will be able to use the Seamoth in the game is 900 meters. Next, let's take a look at the storage module. The storage module provides a 16 slot storage capacity compartment on a section of the Seamoth. That's really all this does. It is notable that the storage module can be stacked for more compartments around the Seamoth. Each compartment will still have only 16 slots, but with 4 you will have a total of 64 available. The hull reinforcement module provides a strength boost to the Seamoth's chassis in order to reduce sustained damage. A single hull reinforcement will provide a 20% damage reduction to the Seamoth. Like the storage module, you can stack the hull reinforcement module with each one increasing the effect by another 20%. So with four hull reinforcement modules, you will see an 80% reduction in damage. One of the most useful modules in my opinion is the engine efficiency module. A single engine efficiency module will decrease the total power consumption by 15% with additional modules stacking the effect. So with four engine efficiency modules, you will have a 60% reduction to power consumption. If energy efficiency isn't what you're after, maybe you might prefer to use the Seamoth Solar Charger. The Solar Charger module does just what the name says. It acts as a solar panel providing a convenient way to recharge the Seamoth while you are out in it exploring. Just as with the solar panels for your bases, the Seamoth Solar Charger is also affected by the time of day. At noon, you will receive the best power charge rate, while at night, you won't be able to charge at all. Your depth level will also affect the charge rate, as the deeper you are, the less sunlight will be collectible by the solar charger. At 200 meters down, you should find the sunlight to be too weak in order to charge the Seamoth. As with the previous modules, you can stack multiple solar chargers to increase the charging rate. Next up, we have the Seamoth Perimeter Defense Module. This is basically a way to create an electrical pulse which will hurt nearby fish. There are two ways in which to fire the pulse. You can do a quick burst by tapping your fire button, which will scare away most fish and has a chance to kill the smaller fish. The burst will use 1% of the power from a normal power cell or 0.2% from an ion power cell. The second way to use it is to charge it up by holding down the fire button. At full charge, the blast will kill all smaller fish caught within it and will deal decent damage to aggressive fauna. A full charge will use 15% of a power cell's full capacity or 3% of an ion power cell's capacity. 
You can use multiple perimeter defense modules in the Seamoth, but it will not stack the effect like the previous modules. Instead, you will just be able to switch between them to fire the electrical pulses at a faster rate. The engine efficiency module will not affect how much power is consumed from a blast with the perimeter defense module. The Seamoth sonar module gives you a way to use sonar to map your surroundings, but not like how you might expect it to work. It will send out a pulse that will show you a topographical representation of the surrounding area. This can be useful for helping you find hidden caverns. The sonar module does not stack the effect like other modules, but you can have multiple ones installed to allow you for a faster rate of scans. However, this really is not effective and pretty much a waste of time. The last module to talk about is the torpedo system. You have two different torpedoes that can be used with it, the gas and the vortex. To use torpedoes, you will have to access the torpedo bay from the front of the Seamoth. You can place up to six torpedoes inside each torpedo bay. When you are placing torpedoes inside, please take note that the vortex torpedoes will take precedence over gas. The vortex torpedo creates a whirlpool effect, which, like the stasis rifle, will immobilize fauna caught within it. It is notable that Leviathan class fauna will be only slightly affected if affected at all by the whirlpool. Gas torpedoes create a gas cloud effect matching that caused by gasopods, gas pods. Gas torpedoes are a damage over time weapon, so the actual effect against an aggressive creature will vary depending on how long it is in the gas cloud. Torpedoes will lock on to a nearby aggressive target with Leviathans taking priority over all others. The torpedo system can be stacked to give you up to four bays so you can carry more torpedoes and so you can separate the types of torpedoes between the bays. Well, that pretty much covers it for the Seamoth and the upgrade modules for it. Be sure to join me next week as we take an in-depth look at the prawn suit and its upgrade modules. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, make sure you hit subscribe and tick that notification bell so you keep up with all my content. Leave me a comment below. Let me know if there's anything you've seen in your game that does not match up to what I have shown here today. If there's any conflict that your game does something different because there are still a few bugs in this game. Well, as always, I am your host, Mr. Spicy. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to keep it spicy this week and I will see you in the next video.